question, excuse me, the question from last week was, can you be an American patriot and a Christian? Ideas. Yes, no, maybe so. I say yeah. Okay, and why do you say yes? Because in a sense, through that maybe not exactly one and the same, but Uh, any other ideas? Yes, no, maybe so? I would say yes. Okay. Uh, mainly because if you look at really the beginning of the country, there was a lot of Christianity. And it was really kind of based off of Christianity a lot more than it is now. Well, yeah. Okay, anything else? Before we move on, I want to give some just some situations that have caused some people to have varying opinions. Okay, I am not stating my opinion, nor am I stating what is right and wrong. I'm just trying to fuel the conversation here. Um, <clears throat> refusing to help refugees as a nation is actually a good idea because you keep you know terrorists and whatnot out. Right. However, as a Christian, it sounds more like a bad idea because you're not helping those in need. Right. So that. Yeah. Begs the question, you know, is it? Um, saying things that offend others uh, because, because we have the right to. As an American, you can say whatever you want. You have freedom of speech. But as a Christian, oftentimes people tell you it's not, not, good, not good to say things. Once again, I'm not offering my opinion. I'm just trying to fuel some conversation here. Um, handing uh, responsibility to the government rather than helping others. Uh, this is more of the Democrat side, but it is still a thing um, where uh, they believe in government programs and that kind of stuff. Um, and sometimes it seems like uh, they push for the government to do it, but yet they don't do it themselves. Right. You know what I mean? Right. right. Like government should provide for for you know welfare and all these things, but I shouldn't help my neighbors in need. You know what I mean? Yeah. Once again. Yeah. Not offering my opinion yet. Not wanting to help society's poor. Um. You know. Uh. They're they're leeches on the system. If you you know kind of the whole. Uh. If you want to if you want anything you got to work for it that kind of thing. Um. Which once again, kind of well, you know, that's more. I find that's more of the Republican side than than than, than the Democrat side on that one. Mm -hmm. But um, social media arguments, another another one that we see really from both sides um, on that one. So in considering these things, um, I guess we'll have to ask the first question: Do these things make you Amer make you an American patriot? Not wanting to help refugees so that we can help our own, that kind of stuff. I mean, that's not American at all. What's not American? I mean, all. Oh. I mean, just from my uh, thought. What do you mean, though? Can you explain a little bit? <clears throat> I'm just uh, the way thing, the way that over decades from the forefathers to now, mm -hmm. it's the government, the American has changed. Okay. For the worst. Okay. You know where they, you know, not being under God's. Uh, direction. Okay. Let me ask it a different way. As a Christian, would you say, let's go, let's go to the list. As a Christian, should you, should we help the refugees in, of Syria? As a Christian, what is your opinion? Yes. I say yes. Okay. Who says no? I'm more interested in the no's at this point. Are there any? Is there anyone who's going to say no? No. Okay. Um, as a Christian. Um, should we say whatever we want because we have that right, or or no? No. 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 Okay. Does anybody to say yes? We should speak out if possible. I would think it would depend on the situation. Okay. Kind of what it's about. I Please mean, if it's do. something that's legitimately going to 
you know, upset somebody, uh -huh. no matter what side you're on, then of course it shouldn't be said. But if you're, you know, if someone starts mocking your religion, you're just trying to stand up for uh -huh. it, then I would say, yeah, I mean, okay. if they get offended, that's more of them. Okay. Any other ideas? I think we should also um, stand up for people that don't have a voice. You know? Okay, like, for instance? Uh, for instance, um, say the refugees, um, since we're already talking about them, well, I think we need to you know, stand up and get the word out that the refugees need help since America's not really helping them that much to make a word for other Christians to go out and help them since okay. they can't come in to help them. Okay. Um, so then the next one there, uh, or I'm sorry, did I cut anybody off? Anybody was going to say anything? Okay. The next one there. Uh, should we le um, leave the government to do these things, or should we not leave the government to do these things? I think it's our response, uh, the Christian's responsibility to handle a lot of these things instead of the government. Mm -hmm. Helping the poor, the Christian should be given, not the government. Well, see, the contrary view to that would then be, but the government's able to reach more people than an individual would. Well, I don't is that we how the should, argument goes? Well, I don't think we should, I don't think we should rely on the government to help them. Right. I think we should, even though the government's helping them, I think Christians should yeah, step sure. up and still help them and not always rely on the government to help them. But with that still leaves the question, should we encourage the government to help them? Um, from an economic well, standpoint, it seems unwise, but from a Christian standpoint, it's kind of ambiguous. Well, even from a Christian standpoint, it's still... If the government's helping, they get their hands in it. And if they get their hands in it, they're going to be controlling it. Mm -hmm. Just like in China, they have Christian churches, but are they really Christian churches? Or well, the government is controlling them, so they can't really be that Christian if their government's controlling them, you know? Okay. It's a controlled environment. So if the government is helping the needy and stuff, yes, it's a good thing, but, yeah. but yet they have their hands in it to where they can control they the can environment. Control. Okay. That's a good point. Anybody else have anything to say? I mean, there's there's certain things that the government really probably shouldn't help out with. Okay, like? Uh, like with food banks and stuff. Okay. You know, I think that should be more community-centered. Okay. Uh, but, you know, with, like, healthcare and stuff, that should be handed to the government. Okay. In part. Just kind of... It, I think it's one, another one of those, depending on the situation. Let me ask you this. Um, you said, uh, like, the food the food bank, you don't think that the government should be... Why would you believe that? Uh, that way it kind of gets the community more involved. Okay. In, it, with, dona with donations and stuff, it gets it more... Okay. Where they kind of know where everything's going, to, where all the donations are going. Okay, and then why would you say that the government should be involved with things like health care? Uh, that way it's a little bit more controlled, so that way not just random people are getting certain types of health care. Okay. That way it's a little bit more regulated. Mm, okay. And then um, not wanting to help society's poor, should we as Christians encourage people to go out and better themselves, or should we just give them handouts? I think we should help them better themselves. Yeah. You know, the same... Give a man a fish, eat for a day. Teach a man to fish, he'll eat for a life. So does that mean we shouldn't help them at all? In, no, I mean, I in, in the more in the more uh, handout way. I think we should help them, but at the same time of helping them, show them as well. Mm -hmm. Like you know. Okay. Um. Hey, you're hungry today. Let's feed you, and let me show you how uh, to get dressed for a job. So you're saying food. don't separate the two. Do both. No. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, and then what about social media arguments? Should we engage? Should our qual should I should our um, standard be to just be quiet and move on? I mean, I think it depends on the situation. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like if if you if you can see that a person's not listening, I you know like even Proverbs says, don't don't try to argue with the fool. You're not gonna get anywhere. <laughs> right. Um. Everybody's a little bit of a full-on Facebook, though. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, I think we can all agree to that. <laughs> but if you know the person's personality... If you, I'm sorry? <laughs> if you know the person's personality type that they take things into consideration, 
then you might, if you, if you might, be able, to get might be able to get through to them. Yeah. Okay. So then let me ask you this. If we should do something as a, as a Christian, does that mean that we should then encourage that the same thing be done in the government? Or how how do we put us if not how do we put a separation between you know who we are as a Christian and then halting that and saying we're not going to do anything with the government? I I I'm just asking questions. I'm not taking sides, guys. Do I? Okay, so if we as a Christian feel like we should, for instance, help the refugees, doesn't that by necessity mean that we should also encourage the government to do the same? And if and if and if not, why? Because the government has to look out for the better of the of, of the okay. country. Mm -hmm. We're looking out for the better of the people. Okay, but then the argument would then go: um, as a Christian, how can you how can you not try and get others, such as the government, to get involved? Um, I think it's to a certain point. Like for instance. Um, the government allowing abortions. Well, I uh -huh. think we should try to fight it as much as we can because morally it's wrong to kill babies. Mm -hmm. So why should we fight to stop abortions but not fight to make sure that the homeless veterans are taken care of by the government? What do you think? Be honest. There's no right or wrong questions. Is what you think. I think I think it all falls under the same thing. Okay. Can you um, explain a little bit? I mean, like the homeless veterans, they they fought for the country. Mm -hmm. Why would the United States not help them? Okay. You know, they they put their life on the line, especially if they went to war. You know. Uh huh. Um, even more so. But then we are faced with the economic problem. We don't have the funds to help everybody. So how should we then rank who we help and who we don't help? Well, for <laughs> you're seeing what I'm getting at, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think I think the government needs a whole, you know, new, new. standpoint on where they need yeah. to put their money out. You know, a whole buy. new. It looks like you're you've got yeah, some money. I just kind of want to add on to what she's saying. It needs to be kind of separated by morals as well. You know, okay. What's right morally? You know. Mm -hmm. But who decides morals? Correct. But who decides morals? Um, so. You have to get the people right. to agree on Christianity being the morals before you yeah, say morals. <laughs> For instance, uh, if we go to the Quran for morals, that means that if somebody wrongs me, I can I can fight back. If you go to the to the Bible for morals, if somebody wrongs me, I have to turn my cheek. Yeah. So where are you getting your morals yeah. from? <laughs> yeah. But good thoughts. I'm I'm not I'm not contradicting what you guys said. I'm just trying to get you guys right. to think more. Well, we need to have a well, the government have a government of uh, all around question. All around what? All around Christ to our Christ, uh, Christian. I, I can't. Christian. Uh, Christian. Christian. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm having a real hard time uh, here today. No problem. It's not you. But it just seems that we need a whole new set of people. You're talking about the politicians? Yeah, yeah. That are, <laughs> you know. You know what my old pastor used to say? Yeah. I'm politician, poly, that, that's many, and then ticks, bloodsuckers, many <laughs> bloodsuckers, <laughs> and Larry Cox. <laughs> Anyways. Um, okay, any other ideas? You guys, I, I think it's, you let it all in them. <laughs> I think it um, also needs to be known that this isn't the first time we're not... Uh, we're refusing help to refugees. When the Jews came to America the first time, we refused to let them in. Jews. Uh, and so it's it's <laughs> more of a it's been it's, it's been done over and over, over. again. It's not yeah. the first time. It's not like America finally hit the bottom of where they no, need to be. Been, no, it's been going <laughs> on for years. No, I think we hit the bottom when Hillary think, Clinton was born. Hey yo! Oh, <laughs> I'm more, just kidding. I think Seeing how corrupt America is is just yeah. getting out there more because of media. So that sounds like false that. false news. <laughs> um, I think America's always been, you know, had that corruption. It's just getting it's a more, lot more so. Well, it's been known a little more. Yeah. Social media. Not so much in. Hmm, okay. Like, for instance, I saw, um, I think, back in the day, the, um, 
Don't say it. Don't say it. Okay. You can't use that word here, bud. <laughs> We're recording it. This is going online. You can't use that word. Anyways, back in the day when there used to be separation between blacks and whites, they did some terrible things that yeah. history doesn't tell you. And it's like, why would you do that? Because they want to cover up. Yeah, like some guys tried and, to intermarry. And we don't know it because... Interbreeders. <laughs> I'm just <because> kidding. <laughs> I'm just there kidding. wasn't social media back then, no, so no, no. the only thing that was recorded was, you know... The, the, thing, that, the thing that Gracie's talking about is they used to have uh, black toddlers uh, walk, and they would throw balls at them. At uh, fairs. Yeah. yeah. Fairs, yeah. <laughs> we should do the right? same thing, just with... Not just... Like, any any kid. kids. <laughs> I'm down for that. <laughs> Anyways... So just something to something to think about, and the reason why um, I brought up this question for the discussion tonight was because we're talking about the rights uh, that we have as Christians. So uh, just so you know, it is recording, so anything you say can and will be used against you. <laughs> so first question uh, then about our conscience as Christians, how do you clear your conscience? How do you have a, a clear conscience as a Christian? Um, try to do what... God tells you to do. Okay. Listen, try to listen to and obey, obey God. Okay. As best you can. Okay. Ask for forgiveness, and if you have something with somebody, uh, make it right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Dana, what do you think? You're being awful quiet. I'm listening. <laughs> Hey, can you um, Google on your phone? Um, I forgot to write the verse down. It says um, something so you have a clear conscience. I just need to know what, what verse that's about. Any other ideas? If you sever it as a young child, you don't have to worry about it as an adult. <laughs> well, there's an idea. <laughs> and that's how you get to the point of going to that uh, mental ward, right? Yeah. <laughs> Any other ideas? No? Okay. Um, the first thing that I wanted to mention, um, and I think that I think that you guys were, you know, I think we're heading in the right direction with this, uh, but the first thing I, I specifically wanted to mention was allow yourself to work on yourself. You know what I mean? Oftentimes we try and give up this false facade for ourselves to make ourselves feel safer and more secure that, you know, the problems of them, the problems of everybody else. You know, and when you just give yourself the um, the freedom, the freedom to work on yourself. You know what I mean? Where, you know, I'm not gonna focus on complaining about everybody else. And what's the scripture say? Something about um, having a clear conscience, or uh, I think it's in Timothy. Um, but anyways, what was I saying? Uh, oh, I that yeah, but there's something specific um, I wanted to mention. I got freedom. a little sidetracked. What? Freedom. Man, I, I, I was trying to remember this verse that I forgot to write down. First and I just, Timothy 3.9. First Timothy 3.9? Here, can I just see your phone? That's why I didn't write it down because I didn't want to mention it. Um, well, see, that's the thing is, is I've had this long day, guys, and my brain is scatterbrain. <laughs> I didn't write that down, and I was like, why didn't I write that down? So I yeah. want to make sure I didn't forget it to say anything. Right. Um, but there comes a certain freedom when you allow yourself to just stop criticizing everybody else. You know, stop picking apart what everybody else is doing wrong, and just focus on you. You know what I mean? Just God, change my heart. Help me. Help me to learn and grow, Lord. See what I mean? Because what we do is we get an overly critical, you know, mindset, especially during when we're in problems. Mm -hmm. You know, and we try to resolve everybody else's problems, and, and we know how to solve everybody else's problems in the whole world. But yet we can't, you know, go to sleep at night. We can't relax in the evenings. We can't. See what I mean? Yeah. We we can't let go of things. And it's like, well, hold on now. <laughs> so uh, the second thing I was specifically going to mention. Um, let go of excuse uh, of offenses. Somebody already said this. Um, who was this? Who said this? Gracie. Gracie? Um, 
What? What? She said, "Forgive people." Yeah, let go of offenses. Don't, don't, don't give yourself excuses for holding on to how everybody else has wronged you and and how you need to, you know, avenge yourself. You know, has anybody seen Red Dawn? Yeah. Avenge me. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> rough crowd tonight, huh? <laughs> uh, but what we like to do is we like to give ourselves excuses as to why it's okay for our bad attitude. Why it's okay to remember all the all the bad things that people have done to us. And the truth is, is to really have a clear conscience, you have to just let go of those things. Now, the third thing I wanted to mention, uh, you can't change others. This is just this is just the way it is. Yeah. Um, if you were them, what would you change about you? Uh, when you start changing your mindset, you know, because we get this idea that I'm the savior of the world, you know, and so we get this idea of how, like, even when we get married, you know, we think about how to change our spouse. When when we're when we're uh, living with our parents, we think about how we can change our parents. You know, when we're at church, we think about how we could change the pastor. You see what I mean? We get this idea all the time, and just it's a very self-destructive idea where we get in our heads that we can we can change other people. You know what I mean? Even as pastors, we do this where, you know, I'm going to preach this message and everybody's going to be changed. And, you know, it's just world changing. I'm going to be a world changer. So then you go into ministry and it's slow going. It's like, well, that's not fun. I, I was supposed to change the whole world. You know what I mean? It's like, well, you, you, can't, you can't change others. You know, God's the one who, who's going to be doing the work in people. Um, so, but if you were them, the person you're having a conflict with, what is it about you that they would want to change? Then think about that. Is that something that you should probably change? Mm. See what I mean? The last fight you get in, you got into. Think back as to why the other person was mad at you. Usually, they're not mad at you for for what you're saying. They're mad at you for what they think that that means. The underlying character mm -hmm. that they think spawned that idea. Were you gonna say something? Or also on how you react to it. Yeah. 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 I was a, I was literally about to say that. You you, <laughs> you took the words from my tongue. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, people are always watching how. And I'm gonna say more about this later. I actually have a little chart that we had made up for that uh, discipleship class. But uh, yeah, people people are always paying attention to how you react to, in, in, in situations. Um, the next thing I wanted to mention: secret uh, resolution of past and present issues. Oh, that, that's history. To you, is it history to them? Right. Maybe they haven't gotten over it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe or, you're trying to brush it under the rug, and they're just not ready to. Right, right, right. Uh, and so with that in mind, you know, um, I'm big on apologies. I really think that people sometimes just try to let things go, and it's like, well, I'm sure they would let it go if you just acknowledge that you were wrong. You know what I mean? But oftentimes we try to, oh, it's fine, it's just, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine! It's like, well, is it though? <laughs> um, so, um, whenever you get in a fight, now pay attention to this. Ask why you're actually upset. Because sometimes we get mad and we get into these fights and we, you know, we, we get so blown up about the other person that, okay, just stop for a second. Why are you upset? You know, and oftentimes if you just question why you're why you're upset, sometimes you'll find out that you're upset for really a stupid reason. Or you'll find this. I don't actually remember what I was mad about. Right. But I know that they did something stupid. And, you know, it's like, well, hold on. If, it, if you can't even remember what it was, or you can remember what it was, and it just, in hindsight, isn't that big of a thing to get mad about, then just go and resolve the conflict. And look, I'm sorry for getting so mad. I, I, I don't know. See what I mean? Just, uh, let's move on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and discover what you did wrong. Obviously, that's that's always something good. If somebody's mad at you, discover why they're mad at you. <laughs> you listen long enough to actually, because um, this is what we do, and don't even deny that you do this. Somebody will start saying something about something that you did, and you'll instantly put up a wall because it hurts. You don't like to hurt. So then, um, you assume what they're probably getting at and what they're probably saying, and so without listening to what the rest of them are saying. You form, formulate a plan as to why they're wrong and what your rebuttal is, and you cut them off and yell your response to them. Mm -hmm. Don't don't pretend like you guys don't do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've I've let, I've dealt with a lot of people in my life, and uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure this is what we do. Um, so why even why even bother with a clear conscience? Well, th there's many many reasons why a clear conscience 
um, benefits is one is the, the Bible specifically says, you know, to do things with a clear conscience. Yeah. So there's that. But then also, um, clear cons consciences allow us to grow spiritually. You know, if you want to grow in your walk with Christ, have a clear conscience. If you don't want to, by all means, keep covering your offenses. Keep, you know, making sure that you have bad attitudes towards people. Just keep keep the bitter attitudes and all. You, you won't grow. I, I promise you that. Were you going to say something? In a way, a clear conscience can keep you out of jail. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and another thing that it does is it helps you to mature mentally. Um, I'm not. I, I'm not saying that uh, people who end up in that um, mental war that they that they you know don't have a clear conscience. That's not what I'm getting at. Because <laughs> we were talking about that before before the meeting. What well, what I am saying is is when we learn how to resolve conflict and how to handle ourselves with grace, we become better prepared for handling conflict in the future, for helping other people see their conflict. See you know what I mean? We, be, we we're able to, to better manage um, the situations. So um, a lot of, a lot of good things. So uh, a lot of people with clear consciences uh, have been more able to witness. Uh, there's this one story um, that I heard. Uh, this woman, she'd been a missionary, all this stuff, and... Uh, she she she'd retired when I she was in her fifties or sixties and uh, she got she was getting real sick and the doctors couldn't figure out what was gone what was wrong and so the pastor was just talking to her one day and it turns out that um, she had uh, she had had an affair when she was sixteen or seventeen with this guy and she had never gotten it out and so she lived with this guilt for her whole life and it was just causing so much you know guilt in her and 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 shame and whatnot and when she when she talked to the pastor about it. She was just able to let go, and within a few weeks, her 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 different physical things that she was having, they just went away. Huh. See what I mean? When we have a clear conscience, it affects our our well being, yeah. uh, and it, and it actually does. What is it? The proverb says a a, a, a um a heavy something like a heavy heart, you know, um, either weighs you down or or I forget I forget how it says it. Ah, I wish I could remember how it says it. But anyways, Proverbs all throughout there talks about the benefit, the benefits of, of of having a good good conscience. But since I can't remember exactly what it says, I don't want to spend any more time on that misquoting the Bible. So I'm going to plow ahead. Uh, how should I apologize? The art of apologizing is very difficult to master. Very difficult to master. Let's go through a few a few steps. Number one, be sincere. Nobody likes it when you're trying to apologize and you sound arrogant and like you're not really sorry. So let's just get that. I'm Sorry you didn't understand what I was trying to say. Yeah. Sorry, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> like on Adventure Time, there's this part where LSP is uh, is apologizing. She's like to Princess Bubblegum. Bu um, bubble she's like. I'm sorry. Sorry, you're stupid. And <laughs> she runs out. <laughs> Anyways, um, don't qualify your so your apology. I'm sorry if I. Mm. I don't like the way you, so I got mad. Don't give a little qualifiers to your apology. Either apologize or don't apologize, but don't give a half-hearted like apology with all these different qualifiers as but to why it's okay. First. Right. <laughs> right. I'm, right. Sorry. I'm sorry that I did this, but you caught you. You just made me mad. Okay. Well, I mean, you, you kind of apologized and then you kind of took it back. But yeah. Whatever. Um, don't delay. What well, we, we do. We, we do this awesome thing huh. called delaying until we talk ourselves out of it. Uh -huh. Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. Later. You know, and then eventually, two or three weeks later, you're like, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> See what I mean? We, my, my dad was telling me the other day, he's like, always be careful what you say to somebody, because you never know if that's going to be the last thing you ever say yeah. to them. So always be quick to apologize, because he said there's things that he's told his dad that he's never apologized for, yeah. and now he's looking back and regretting it. Yeah. On that same note, there was this guy uh, that worked at Sagu, and I've shared this before, but um, his name was David Bush, and uh, I sent a mean, nasty email to this guy. I mean, I was all kinds of upset because Sagu put put restrictions on the social media and has a college student, and I wasn't going to stand for that. So I sent him this big, nasty email. Uh, anyways, a couple I never got to apologize to him after the fact. Uh, you know, he, he just talked to the dorm pastor, and he's like, this guy really seems like he's having a hard time adjusting. You might want to see if he needs any help. 
And uh, that that's all he did. He didn't like report me or anything like that. And uh, well, anyways, a couple years later, he actually died of cancer. Oh. Yeah. Talk about guilty conscience. Oh, oh snap, son. And uh, yeah. So along that line, yeah. Watch this what you say. A little too in love with the Instagram. <laughs> but seriously, <laughs> what were you gonna say, Diana? Would you like to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to catch one to lay down. <laughs> it all started when I was four. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, so don't delay your apology. Uh, show that you are sorry. When uh, It's been said actions speak louder than words. Yeah. And uh, if you go and apologize to somebody for something, but you don't show it that you're sorry by your actions, they might have a hard time believing that you're actually sorry. Yeah. Eh, just on that there. Um, and apo the reason why you want to apologize is because you should desire to heal what's been hurt. That is the root of an apology. Don't apologize because you're just trying to shut somebody up or because you want... See, I mean, <laughs> because that's not actually an apology. You're doing it you're just, just to make them happy. You're not actually sorry. You're lying to them mm -hmm. for the sake of them being happy. Apologize. But apologize for the sake of Make healing it. what has been hurt. Make it real. Right. And that goes right along with the first one, be sincere. Was somebody going to say something? Oh, I thought I saw a hand or something. Um, make sure it's a good time. Are they upset? Did you just get in the fight? Have they had time to cool off? Uh, Just little ideas like that. Make sure it's a good time. Are they around other people? <laughs> yeah. Because you don't want to make this thing awkward for them. Right. Um, yeah, so you want it to be when they're alone. Um, and also, I can't I can't say this enough, guys. After they've calmed down. Sometimes it takes people even a few days to calm down. You want to give them their space before you go back right back in at it, you know. Lest what this is what's going to happen. You're going to get into another argument, and it's going to be worse than the first one because they didn't calm down from the first one. Right. So you're going to be fighting for two arguments worth. <sighs> Anyways. Um... This is how a basic um, apology looks. God has convicted me of how wrong I've been in my whatever the root offense was. Whatever the root of what you did is. Mm. See what I mean? You don't want to hem haw around the small things. Um, I'm sorry that um, – what's a, what's, a, what's, a, what's a small one? Um, I'm sorry that I lied to you about this. I'm sorry that I felt like I knew more than you, and so I – you know, it was prideful, and, and instead of listening to listening to what you had to say, so I mean, go go to actually the root of why you did what you what you did. You know what I mean? Right. And then this is the most important part of an apology that people most often skip over. Will you forgive me? You ask them if they will forgive you. Why is that important? Anybody know? You want to make sure that they understood, and that they, when they answer back. You want to make sure that they took the apology sincerely. Uh huh. Because yeah. okay. if they don't answer to you, you're kind of like in a limbo, uh, like, yeah. do they accept it, or do you? Do, you do they like, need more time, yeah. or you know? Okay. Anything else? Make sure everybody's on the same page. Yeah. What, what do you mean? That way, that you know that it's not just gonna start another argument. It was brought up, you know, two months down the road. Huh. Huh. Because I have seen that happen. Well, see, the problem with that, though, is sometimes you have to just let your idea go and just, you know what I mean, and choose to make peace in the situation rather than sticking to your guns, you know, so that's that's hard. That's easier said than done. Uh, Gracie, what were you going to say? I was going to say um, to encourage them to grow as well. Okay. How so? Well, um, you're asking them to forgive you, and if they haven't come to that point of forgiving you yet, you know, maybe cause them to look at why they're not forgiving you and hmm. cause them to grow to forgive you. Okay. Any other ideas? This also just popped up into my mind. Forgive and forget. Okay. Just kind of, once you're ready to forgive, just kind of move on. Yeah. But that just kind of went with it. Yeah. Because it went with what I said previously. Right. Uh, me personally, why I think the will you forgive me part is absolutely essential it is actually for, for a number of reasons. The first is because it's very humbling, yeah. and it makes sure that you do it you're, – you're actually apologizing. Yeah. See what I mean? Because what we do with apologies is we try to do a prideful apology. Hey, you know, I'm sorry, sorry. whatever. 
you know, and just blow it over. Where it was important to that person. And so you're acknowledging what you did wrong, and you're specifically asking them, look, I know that I did this wrong. Will you forgive me? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's a humbling process, and I think that's an absolutely essential part of an apology. Because pride cannot exist in our lives. It's going to compete for competence. Right. I said that wrong. <laughs> it's going to, com to compete <laughs> for dominance. <laughs> competence. <laughs> Are you listening to me right now? <laughs> Goodness <laughs> sakes. <laughs> Anyways. Um, another reason why I think that it, I think that it's important is, you know, when you say, "Will you forgive me?" It's kind of like, kind of like a summation to what you're saying. You know, you're talking to somebody. This is real talk. You know, you you, you mention you always mention the worst offense to the lightest offense. You know, what I mean, you don't you don't want to start with the little things and then work your way to the big thing. It's just gonna piss them off before you get to there. Yeah. You want to start out with the, with the thing that's actually hurting their feelings or, or hurt them physically or whatever, and then you want to work your way down to to the to the less important things. And when you when you say that, will you forgive me? It's an interaction. You know, what I mean, it's kind of a, a summation. You know, this is what I have to say, and it's kind of a, it kind of welcomes them to yeah. to partake of the healing process. Do you know what I mean? Kind of includes them in the process, which is good because you're asking them to forgive you. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? So what do you do if they don't accept your apology? Doesn't matter. You did your share. You did what you were supposed to do. Just make sure you did it with the right attitude. Mm -hmm. And don't do it again in the future. Right. Don't do it again in the future. When you keep apologizing for something and you keep doing it, <laughs> that's not an apology. And it really makes people mad when you do that. I, I speak from experience in this. I, I'm a master of doing this. You know, I have a po I'm sorry. Oh, I did that one before, didn't I? See what I mean? I, I, I know this one. I speak from experience in this. Make sure you stop. Um, yeah. Oh, and then also, I just wanted to throw this in here. I have it on my notes here. When others are upset with you, your conscience is not going to be at ease. If you know that other people are upset with you up here, it, it, it doesn't matter. Like, you know. You know what I mean? That's gonna that's gonna upset your conscience. Um, so how do I manage my anger? You know, we get in a fight. You know, whatever. What? How do I do to man? What do I do to manage that? What do I do to 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 make sure I don't blow up? Any ideas? You an awful quiet chat. I would say, if at all possible, dismiss yourself from the situation. Okay. Yeah. Like this? I'm out of here. <laughs> just, just kidding. If you're on an airplane, it ain't gonna work too well. But <laughs> anywhere else, you pretty much can. Right. Touch um, a boat on the ocean. Go for a while. Titanic, for instance. Titanic in one of the life rafts as uh, it's sinking. <laughs> what? What? Is that? Go for a walk. Okay. Anything else? Pull yourself down. Yeah. Think the situation through. Steven's okay. even worth getting mad for. <laughs> Don't discuss it with other people. Yeah? Yeah, uh, yeah I would say uh, so. Yeah, because that's just going to yeah. refuel. Looks like you were about to say something. Well, I was going to say, don't discuss it with the wrong people. If, say, I'm mad yeah. at somebody for that doing something. That was more thing. spiritual than you. Oh, yeah. Just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kidding. Oh, gossip with the right people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, if I'm mad at... Doing something. Okay. Well, I know I can go to Michael and. Oh, and I can tell you, yeah, they are terrible people. And and he'll be like, well, Gracie, think of it this way, you know, look at it this way. Do you do this, you know, type things, and kind of walk me through it to be able to help me in the situation instead of make it worse. Did anybody else hear her say that it's a good thing when I throw things in her face and say that she does the same thing? <laughs> Did anybody else hear that? I heard that. I heard that. I think I've got multiple recording. witnesses here, and it's recorded. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you just sunk yourself. <laughs> what did they say, hook and sinker? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Were you done? I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just joking. And kind of going on with being mad at a family member. Like, let's say you're mad at your mom. Don't go, go talk to your dad about it. It just kind of... And then it just makes the argument bigger. And... So many funny stories that I can't tell. Hmm. Anything else? Yourself in a <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you do? <laughs> Dang it, we're all friends here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. Stop talking. I've never done it actually, so. 
<laughs> what, stop talking? Or? I've never been angry. So. Oh. <laughs> Except at Russia. Except at Russia. And Russians. No, and anybody who speaks Russian. No. no. <laughs> Darker than anger. Whoa. <laughs> Things got real, guys. If, uh, if you see yourself starting to get very angry in, a, like, say, an argument, stop talking. Because when you're mad, you tend to say things you regret later. Mm-hmm. Well, see, that's a double-edged sword, though, because at one point that's a good idea, but at another point it's bad. And I'll tell you how it can be bad. If somebody thinks that you're ignoring them, it can actually make them uh, blow up on you worse <laughs> than in the first place. So, yeah. so you know, yeah. uh-oh, what do you do when that happens? Well, you let them know. I, no, before I'm you mad stop, to you. Before you stop talking, let them know, hey, I'm stepping away from the situation. I'm too upset to talk about this right now. I need some air. I think that's absolutely, absolutely yeah. good. And it's important that as we deal with relationships with other people – that we we allow people the freedom to dismiss themselves from conversations. You know what I mean? Sometimes we try to, like, dominate things and make sure that we're, you know... Our voice is heard. Our voice is heard. That we're controlling the situation. That You know, that kind of an idea. And and we kind of, like, you see... You see uh, boyfriends and girlfriends do this, where the boyfriend will be overly overly, uh, dominating on the girlfriend. Sometimes the girlfriend does it, too. I'm not saying it's only boys who do this. Uh, And... You know, they'll make it where the girlfriend doesn't have rights, you know, and, or he'll make her feel bad for having those rights. Mm-hmm. You know, like stepping away from an argument, for instance. So, um, so just might uh, anybody else have anything? Uh, kind of just going off what you just said within relationships. I overheard a counseling the other day. There's always a couple that's in it before my sister and I. Uh-huh. And it's more, I found out they're in them for more of trust issues because she's so much more controlling on, you know, who he talks to, what's on his phone, like, it's like, whoa. <laughs> <That's gross. laughs> and you can whoa. tell that it causes problems. Yeah. I mean, everybody needs to kind of be leveled out a little bit more yeah. as far as... If we weren't recording. <gasps> okay. <laughs> I will not say it. <laughs> I will not say it. Um, clear your head, go for a walk. This was mentioned by Zach. Um, stop feeding your thoughts. Uh, I don't know if anybody mentioned this. Basically, you're going to sit there and stew over the problem <laughs> over and over oh, in your yes. head. Get your mind on something else. Yeah. It only works to go for a walk if you're not going around stomping on the ground. <laughs> 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 yeah, obviously, going for a walk is a good idea if it's used correctly. What? I had a neighbor that used to do that. <laughs> <laughs> My mom has a neighbor who does that. <laughs> oh. Um, oh my gosh. That what? Funny story. <laughs> Grace and I are outside with Micah. Uh, and this is before Trace was born. And uh, the name. Na- <laughs> what time? <laughs> the neighbor. <laughs> okay. It's a good story. The, yeah, the neighbor. Uh, the neighbor runs into the tree and he gets mad at the tree. <laughs> <laughs> what? The tree out. what are you doing standing there, tree? <laughs> bleeping, bleeping. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. no. 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 Like Kyle for the rug? Yeah. In, in his he? defense, does he drink or something? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think he broke out of the uh, mental ward and <laughs> What? I said they were driving and they just got home, so yeah. they shouldn't have been drinking. Well, I mean, uh, I don't know. Just... Take deep breaths. Yeah. Now, see, this works two ways. You can go <laughs> and work yourself up. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about where you manage your breathing. Focus on slowing your heartbeat. Focus on taking deliberate breaths. Focus on, you know what I mean? Just just draw your attention back and just calm down. Yeah, get it contained. Um, calm down and sit down. Just stop raging for a little bit and just sit still for a second. You know, just, just calm down. Uh Although, here's a, a funny little ironic twist. If you tell somebody to calm down, it makes them more upset than if oh, you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Purpose in your heart not to yell. Mm. Make the decision, I am not, this is not what I'm about, nothing good is going to come out of it, so I'm going to I'm going to keep things civil. See what I mean? And when you feel you start, yourself start to push, remember, anger is kind of like an adrenaline rush. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you get angry, it really makes you feel good. So you have to realize you're going to want to yell. 
you're going to want to lose your temper. Mm -hmm. You can't let those feelings dominate what you are or are not going to do. Right. You have to hold yourself back and say, I'm not going to yell because why? Is that a good enough reason to prevent you in the heat of a moment from yelling? Because if, if it's a, not a good enough reason for now, it's not going to be a good enough reason when you're mad. Right. I mean, you need you need to give yourself a legitimate reason why why you don't want to yell anymore. So I mean, it needs to be something that you come to your own decision on. Especially. I'm not going to yell because. What? Especially to your kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Buddy. Yeah. Even when they pee on the floor for the umpteenth billion time. Uh, pee on the floor again, like I see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um. Set your rights aside. Well, a lot of times we blow up emotionally because we feel like our rights are being violated. In the heat of an argument, take your rights and just set them aside for a minute. I'm not saying, you know, date somebody who's physically or, me or, or, or mentally, you know, unstable for you. Somebody who's going to cause you harm. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is don't worry about seeking that you don't get stepped on in this moment. Just focus on calming down. Right. See what I mean? Because what we do is, you're not going to treat me like that, and then we go up yeah. on them, and you see what I mean? Yeah. Just set your rights aside for a second and just calm down. Right. Focus on calming down. Do do what is needed to calm down. Was there anything else that somebody was going to say? No? Okay. Um, and also, remember we were talking about last week, um, self-image, and the week before that we were talking about authority structures. You guys remember that? Mm -hmm. Remember this in all your fights that you get in. God is using these people and situations that are annoying you to work character in you. God is using these things that are rubbing you the wrong way for the purpose of making you a more mature Christian. Helping you think things through better. Helping you help others. Help, see what I mean? It's for, it's for a reason. God's using them, these okay. things, for, for, for that reason. So, anyways, um, so just some, some things here. Um, uh, you don't have to read this. I'm not going to, but let me just explain the idea here. There's the guilt-blame balance. Okay, when you wrong somebody, they put blame on you, right? And that helps them to not feel guilty about the situation. The guilt and the blame is it's equaled out. But when you apologize to someone, see that tips the scales. There's no one to put blame on anymore, so the guilt intensifies while the blame eases. Eventually, they reach a place of either being miserable and taking it out on other people, or they're going to just forgive you. You want it to not be your fault. So, I mean, because what happens is God's going to be working on them, and they're going to use you as an excuse for not letting God work in them. Mm -hmm. Make sense? But if you remove yourself from the situation, okay, they're gonna be, you know. In living hell and whatnot, which is that's their own thing that they had to work through, but it's going to be easier for God to be able to impact their heart. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you can read that whole long thing, but that's basically the idea. So it'll, you know, if you took the uh, discipleship course, you've already read through that a hundred times, anyways. Um, so then the next idea is this, and once again, you don't have to read through this. The idea is the things that we focus on are the things that we inevitably conform to. Okay, if we focus on God. Right? Our conversion, we're born again. Uh, our concentration, we strengthen our emotional focus toward God by comparing his actions and attitudes with our actions and attitudes. We compare ourselves to God and see wh where we're lacking. And, and you know what I mean? We're trying to conform to the image of God. We're trying to seek after God, trying to know God more. And then that leads to conformity. As we concentrate on Christ, his word allows the spirit to produce uh, basic changes in us. We start to become a new person. This takes a process of time. However, the exact opposite is true as well. When somebody wrongs us, we can react incorrectly, and our contempt, in our contempt, we'll we will react to the whatever wrong we suffered. React to the offense, right? We'll turn to we'll turn. We were hurt, so now we're trying to hurt other people, right? Um, and this le leads us to our concentration. We strengthen our, our wrong uh, wrong emotional focus by continually re reviewing offenses. We play it over and over in our head what they did wrong. Play it over and over again, again in their head how, what they should have done and, and what we're going to say to them the next time we see them. And so, I mean, we just play this over and over in our head. That leads to conformity. We develop similar basic attitudes as they have in an attempt to not act the same. So, I mean, like, for instance, our dad is an alcoholic. He beats us. We get so angry at him 
that we, we, we purpose so hard that we're not going to become an alcoholic, that we repeat the same attitudes in us as your father, who is an alcoholic beating you, is showing. Selfishness, for instance. See what I mean? Bitterness. See what I mean? Those same things that you see in that person, because you focus on it, you start turning into that person without even realizing. Oh, yeah. You become your worst nightmare. Um, also what happens is you see in others most clearly what is in you. See what I mean? So you'll see, for instance, I'm going to use the example of a, of a drunk father again. You know, you've got this drunk father, and you're going to see thing and see things, and it's going to irritate you. He's so selfish all the time with this. Now, why do you think you noticed his pride and his selfishness first? Out of all his character flaws, why do you think that was the thing you noticed first? And usually the reason is because we have these little hidden things in us that, that we can't see because it's us. See what I mean? And we excuse it because we have something else to focus on. But if we put our attention to Christ and we start focusing on God, he starts showing us these things and the Holy Spirit starts working in us to rid us of these things like our pride, like our self-centeredness. See what I mean? And then the more we grow, hopefully, the idea is, the more we're able to just let things go and not focus on the wrong of other people, we start growing as a Christian and we start being more about how to help other people rather than how to analyze everything that they're doing wrong. Does that, make, does that kind of make sense? Okay, so uh, this next chart kind of shows what that's about. Th there's the two sides that are going on. You know, oh, I'll never be like my father. And this other person out here, I don't know if you can see them, but right here, they say, oh, you're just like your father. Well, how is that possible? He was a drunk. He, he, he neglected us. He was unfaithful because you have the same root attitudes as his visible actions. Does that make sense? This is taken from Bill Gothard's uh, courses. So if you'd like to know any more about this, you can look up Bill Gothard. Um, so that same bitterness, selfishness, pride, self-centeredness that he was showing, that he was exhibiting, his root attitude, you are exhibiting by your focus on him, or your over-focus, I should say, which is then causing different actions, which is making you think that you're a lot different than this person you're resenting. But the truth is, excuse me, but the truth is, that you're becoming just like him even though you're doing different things. Your attitude is the same. See how that works? So once again, when you when you have a clear conscience and when you forgive people, you're doing it for your good and for their good. Everybody wins when you have a clear conscience. See what I mean? God's able to work in them better. He's able to work in you better. You're able to grow and mature. But when you hold on to these things, either you know it wasn't my fault, they got mad at me, and that's their problem, or the other side around, I'm not going to apologize to them. When we give ourselves excuses as to why the situation can go unresolved, our conscience becomes bothered. And the Holy Spirit just presses that further into us because he doesn't want you to stay the same. He doesn't want you to ruin yourself. So he's going to do things to try and draw you back to him. Does that make sense? But as we harden ourselves, he has to go to different measures to try and soften our hearts so we'll listen. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> so this process is, is obviously lengthy and... Uh, uh oh, okay, there we go. So this is an example of, of how the how the reaction works. Once again, you don't have to wor worry about all that. Focus on these pictures here. Somebody wrongs us. If we respond correctly, they re they grow differently and they respond to us differently. In the future, it helps for things that would have been barriers to help you to grow and, and be a better person, to be a, to have a better relationship. You, a doors are open for you to witness to other people. Everyone all around wins. But when somebody wrongs us and we show a wrong reaction, then there's a wall put up between us, and then they go to other people, and those other people will always take up the offense of their homeboy. Mm -hmm. So now these people you had nothing to do with are going to take up the offense that they think that you did to this other per person, regardless of what the actual situation was. And so then you'll have a bunch of tits with people that you didn't even know. Right. You see, this thing blows up. <laughs> wrong reaction is absolutely... Absolutely critical to not do. So everybody kind of understand how, the, how those things work, how we turn into our enemies, how we, you know, what happens when we don't resolve issues. Okay, this is this is very important because as a, as a Christian, it's very important that we don't allow ourselves excuses for not having a clear conscience. God wants us to sleep well at night. God wants us to have a clear conscience. God wants us to grow and to have a great uh, ability to, to witness and impact other people. So, um, what's right? What rights should you sacrifice? As a Christian, what rights do you think the most important things are to sacrifice? Are you talking about like... Rights as a person. 
that you should sacrifice as a Christian? The right to do what I want when I want. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of like the self-will thing, the, the, my rights to, to operate under my guidance. Okay. Anything else? As a Christian, I think even if you did wrong, I think you should just let it go. Okay. Looks like you were about to say something. I was going to say, like, the right to an apology. Um, for someone to apologize to you. Even though you think you're right and they were wrong and they're arguing about something that you see you can't get nowhere, mm -hmm. you as a Christian, I think you should just let it go. Just let it go. Oh, because okay. it's not going to go nowhere. Yeah. And I do want to highlight something that Gracie just mentioned as a Christian giving up the, um, you know, the right to an apology. You know, I think I deserve an apology. Well, giving up that right. Is, that's what you just said, right? Okay. Anything else? It kind of goes along with that. The right to be offended. Yeah, the right to be offended. I, I, I've been wronged, me personally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Honestly, the right to live your life how you want to. Okay. That kind of goes right in here with what Chuck was saying. Instead of yeah. following what God says. Yeah. Good. Good. I'm going to list a few things. This is not an exhaustive list, and if you guys think of anything, just kind of wave me down, okay? I'm going to make sure everybody's heard. Um, shooting off your mouth, uh, especially in America, this I think this one's harder than a lot of yeah. other countries because that's what we have a constitu constitutional right to do. Right. So it's hard to... Right. Yeah. You hear all your life, especially in the old-timey churches, all, you know, all these yeah. you know, Christians, older Christians who are always like, your rights, you know, make sure you're getting your rights and everything, and, and then to go from that and say, okay, I'm going to give that right up of my own free accord. That's a little bit difficult to do. So would Jesus say it? That's just something you should always ask yourself before you shoot off your mouth. Right. In this situation, do you think God and Jesus would be... Or post on Facebook. Oh, buddy. Or post on Facebook. Yeah. Do you think Jesus would be in this situation right now? You know, I, I know that was, like, hyped up in, like, the 90s, but that's a very serious thing that you should probably listen to. What yeah, would Jesus do? JP. Oh. What? What would Jesus post? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy. That's good. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm stealing that. <laughs> Plagiarist! He's going to post that later. <laughs> <laughs> I am. No, I'll probably forget. <laughs> but I'll, I'll pretend to. Situations don't justify immoral actions and reactions. I'm okay in in, in, in in doing this immoral thing because they did something first. You guys should seriously go through Genesis and read Abraham's story. He had so many opportunities to react and do something stupid because somebody else was doing something stupid. And he didn't, though. Like, Buddy. Buddy. So many things that I could get into. I'm not going to, but I could. I could have kept you here for another hour. See that? Demanding better treatment. I think you said this, right? Or is this? I said, uh, said not this. getting offended. Oh. And I said, so that kind of goes hand in hand. What you want, them. when you want. Well, I mean, that kind of goes with it, though. I'm gonna say these. Okay. See, the idea is that we oftentimes think that we deserve to be treated better than Jesus was treated. Nah. Yeah. And so, as a result, surprise, surprise, <laughs> things don't work out so great for us. Um, so demanding better treatment, you know, it's it's okay if, if some of your rights get trampled. Um, being the world's savior, <laughs> can you really correct every wrong in others? I can if they let me. I can if they let me. <laughs> this is a right that you just have to give up. You know, I, I'm giving it the right to feel like I, I can fix everybody else. That was really funny. Uh, foolish spending. Do you buy whatever you want? Whenever you want? Are your finances submitted to God? The quest for fairness. Do you expect paradise on earth? That wasn't fair, though. They had no right to treat me like that. Well, once again, though, a lot of times, like uh, Diane and Grace, you were both talking about, sometimes you just have to let it go. <laughs> and
and they're not going to receive an apology. They don't even think that they were wrong. Why would they apologize to you? And that has, just has to be okay, you know. Uh, and I do want to clarify, though, I'm not talking about abuse situations. I want to make that absolutely clear. I'm talking about your normal, average conflicts, okay? I'm not talking about abusive situations. Because sometimes there's always that person who's been in an abusive relationship or abusive situation, and they're just like, I should have just stayed and let him beat me. Like, oh, no, I didn't say that. Calm down, everybody. I didn't say that. <laughs> So I want to go on record. I'm not talking about abusive situations. I'm not talking about that at all. Question of the week. What makes someone wise? What makes someone wise? <laughs> Question of the re week. And next month, we're starting on a very fun, fun, fun series. Be there, be square. Oh, I won't be here. Is You're going to be square. Yeah. You're going to be square. Luckily, we put our lessons online. Any questions or comments before we co I turn off the recording? There's no way I can be on live, huh? On what? Live. live. <gasps> you should start doing that. Uh, a here's live. the thing. I lack the confidence to do something. So. I'll pray about it. You can answer people's questions. I'll film you. Well, yeah, I know questions. you would. I know you would. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this person from here says, why are you so ugly? Hmm? What's your answer for that? <laughs> I'm sorry! I'm sorry. I, I tried to mask his face, but he wouldn't go for that. Hey, you can't answer for answer for me. <laughs> no, I'll, I'm the answer. Right? Oh, I'll answer it. for you. He and says yeah. you're stupid and go home. <laughs> go home. Uh, what makes... So, I mean, sorry. Uh, any questions or comments? I'm going to stop the recording.